G'day, this is the last video in our walkthrough. We're going to install a couple of mods and then we're going to install a post processing tool called an ENB to make Skyrim look fantastic. So, this video is going to be broken down into two main sections. In the first section, we're going to finish downloading the last of the visual mods that we're going to need to overhaul our Skyrim and the entire last half of the video will be completely dedicated to getting an EMB installed. It's quite a complicated process, so we're going to need a lot of time to get through it. So please open up every link in the description up to Project EMB. Starting with HD Plants, we're just going to download with Manager and Hybrids HD Plants simply overhauls a couple of the plants that we didn't quite get with Flora Overhaul Lavender, snowberries, that sort of deal. Improved weapon impacts. It simply changes the visual effect when you strike a metal ended weapon against a hard surface like other steel weapons or rocks. Just a little immersion thing. It's just a little thing, but I think it's very important. Just download with manager. Race menu is quite a comprehensive mod and it adds a lot of different sliders for when you're creating your character. It also allows you to import presets from other users on the Nexus. For example, someone might have made a character that looks like Lara Croft or Carl Drogo. You can just simply download their preset as a mod and then use it to create your very own character. Simply download with manager. The Eyes of Beauty simply adds a lot more new eye textures that we can use in the game. It comes in two parts. We're firstly going to need the Eyes of Beauty player. And we're also going to need the NPC texture replacer. It's the third one down. If we want the NPCs to have the new special eyes. Superior law friendly hair. This replaces all of the vanilla hair in the game with a much higher texture. It comes in two versions, 2K and 1K. So... If you're struggling a little bit in performance, you might want to go for 1k, however, I'm going to go for 2k. Speaking of vanilla assets, I'm going to download Realistic Male Face. This just changes the maps and textures for the male faces in the game. Pick between rugged or smooth, depending on your supermodel preference. I'm going to go with rugged. Now, I'm not going to pick a female texture now. I'm going to get you to do that by yourself. The female texture mods in the game depend on what body mod you download. So say for example, say for example, SG Textures is only compatible with custom body mods. Body mod that you're going to want is going to depend from person to person. I'm going to let you do that on yourself. I actually think that the vanilla females don't look that bad, but I am going to download realistic males. But I do not like the old people. The old people in Skyrim share the same vanilla body as the young people. And what we're going to do is just download this mod, which is going to make the older people look a little bit more haggard. Speaking of old things, BVFE overhauls some of the vampire assets in the game. It allows female vampires to have fangs, which they actually don't have in the vanilla game. And allows you to change how the eyes look. And I'm going to download glowing eyes which gives it a much darker deeper red color but pick what you like download with manager next up is footprints this simply adds footprints behind your character whilst you're walking in the snow it also works for boars wolves horses and it's a tiny little mod but it makes a big difference download with manager Lock picking interface simply changes the texture and mesh that you get when you go and start picking a lock in Skyrim. I'm going to download the main version. Next up, Skyrim project optimization. In games, we only can see a cone in front of us and it's a very specific set size depending on your field of view. In Skyrim, it actually renders in the background substantially more than we can see. 
Skyrim project optimization prevents that from happening, which is going to save a lot of FPS. We are going to need the fourth version down, the full version, and we're going to download with manager. Next up, alternative start, live another life. Now, obviously not a texture mod, but we have installed a lot of mods and this can play a little bit of havoc with the intro sequence to the game. And as such, Alternative Start Live Another Life gives us the opportunity to skip that tutorial and we can start our character in one of around about a hundred presets. So you might decide to be a property owner in solitude or a bandit, a necromancer starting off It'll give you some gear and it will allow you to create your own custom character that doesn't have to follow by Bethesda's rules. Improve vanilla mountains. This just changes the textures on mountains and prevents some mods from playing a little bit of havoc with the shadows in the far distance. You may have noticed some flickering. This mod is a good mod to use to try and stop that a little bit. Now, you may have noticed that one thing I've omitted from this tutorial was enhancing the distant terrain, and this is for one very particular reason. There is a recent addition to the Nexus called Dindu Lord. I hope I pronounced that correctly. That is by far the best mod out there for enhancing the distant terrain. But it is a monster to set up. It's in a separate video all by itself you can click the screen now or the link in the description to go do that and i recommend doing that after everything else but if you get that and you find it's too overwhelming we can go back to the ruffled feather we can download in the optional file section enhanced distant terrain and you can use that this has a slightly larger performance hit than dindu lord it isn't as good looking and it doesn't have as many objects. I really recommend Dindu Lord, but if it's a bit too much for you as a new modder, I completely understand. It's a little overwhelming and the ruffled feather is pretty good. Last up, we've gone back to Climates of Tamriel and we just need to download a few patches that we missed the first time around. First up is the Dragonborn patch. Then Sounds. Dawn Guard patch and Sound Dawn Guard patch. Don't download the Winter Edition, it causes issues with several mods. And while we're on the topic of Climates of Tamriel, we're also going to download the Climates of Tamriel weather patch, and this is going to prevent several mods from misbehaving during custom weather events for Climates of Tamriel, in particular Skyrim Flora Overhaul. So we're just going to download this. And let's start installing the mods. First up, obviously, was the hybrids plant collection. There's nothing really too fancy with these mods for quite some time. I'm just going to be going through it like we have a hundred times beforehand. Selecting the data directory at the top level for both hybrids plants and weapon impacts. Next up is race menu. Eyes of beauty, we want to install the main file first. And then the texture replacer, merging them together when we're prompted. Superior law friendly hair. Wonderful. Rugged males. Select the data directory. Consistent older people. Again, selecting the data directory. Better vampires. Manual. Wonderful. Footprints. Manual. Perfect. Lockpicking overhaul. As you can see, there's nothing really that fancy. Now, there is something fancy that we have to do for Skyrim Project Optimization. We want to hit Manual here, and we are presented with two distinct options. We have the Main Data File and the Optional File. Both of these folders are functionally identical. 
from a macro point of view. However, you'll notice that one of them ends in .esm and one of them ends in .esp. The difference between an ESP file and an ESM file is that an ESM file is a master file and cannot be overwritten. If you follow this guide to the letter, you should be safe to install the ESP file. But if you're experiencing issues where you're not getting any boost or any performance change after installing this mod, you're going to want to use the ESM version. But because I followed the guide, I'm going to get the ESP. Next up, alternative start, manual, perfect. Improved vanilla mountains, set as data directory. Now remember with the ruffled feather, I do recommend die do lord, but if you're not gonna use that complicated installer, we can just use the ruffled feather. And it still looks amazing, it just has a slightly larger performance impact. We do have a quality world map. We do have Dragonborn and a quality world map. And we want to merge it with our existing Ruffled Feather installation. Remember, only do this if you're not going to be following the Daidu Lord installation. Link is in the description. Climates of Tamriel will just be merging all of these with our existing Climates of Tamriel installation. And the weather patch, we want the regular edition. We have Dragonborn. We are using light level zero. And we do not want any changes to the snow brightness. We do have Supreme Storms. And we want to install. Let's activate all of these mods in the order which we downloaded them. Climates of Tamriel will be activated by default. Because we've essentially installed those files in our existing Climates of Tamriel folder. Check the plugins, make sure nothing's awry, and sort. So when we load into the game this time, instead of going to our Ironclad Warrior, we're actually going to start a new game so that we can see that Live Another Life is working. And here we are. I'm just going to turn the race menu light off by hitting left control. And as we can see, we have new special eyes race menu. We can change, especially we can have a lot more control over how particular colors look. I'll give a good example of that with the skin tone. If for some reason I wanted a blue Nord, I can go for that. You know, sky's the limit. If you've got a drain eye, whatever. Uh, but let's just create this character for now. And I'll give it a minute for all of the MCM menus to be detected. Now that our MCM menu has been detected, we can pop in, see footprints are there. And we can modify some stuff if we want, but I'm not that fussed. At this point in time, everything is just dandy now that we've looked at those mcm menus let's go have a little chat to the statue of mara and here we can choose how our character will begin we can of course do the vanilla start but like i mentioned that can cause some issues i think i might be a vigilant of stendar just for giggles and we can go sleep in the bed to begin our new life And there we are. Our character has moved over. And I can go talk to my new brothers. How's it going? Excuse me, coming through, out of the way. And I just want to have a quick little squidge 
at the rocks. Beautiful rocks. No flickering. Lovely. And the enhanced distant terrain looks pretty good. Although, like I said, Daidu Lord is better. Because we're installing an EMB, I'm going to pop into settings, go to display, turn brightness all the way down. Save the game. And let's install that ENB. The last mod that we have to install is the ENB. And the ENB is what's going to really make our game look astounding. It has a really big performance impact and it comes with a secondary memory manager that is going to help us prevent crashes along with SKSE. So we're going to download the Project ENB data folder first with manager. And below that, we're going to download Project ENB complete manually. Above the download manually button, you'll see another hyperlink, currently 0.221. Open that in a new tab by pressing Control left click and download this folder right here. Now let's head back to the Project ENB page. Gonna need to come back here in just a minute. Go to Mod Organizer and install the Project ENB data folder just like it was a regular mod. Activate it and we can leave this for just a moment. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to open up my Skyrim directory. I'm going to go into ENB series 0.221. So that is the second folder that we downloaded. I'm going to go into the wrapper version and I'm going to grab the folder d3d9.dll, drag and drop it into my Skyrim directory. That's all we need from here. One thing you should know, the difference between the wrapper and the injector version is the injector version allows for some third party software to operate with the ENB, whereas the wrapper version does not. Any program that creates an overlay on top of your game, the wrapper version will cause instant crashes. So if you do want to record your screen, you'll have to use either NVIDIA Shadowplay or the injector version. But we can delete that folder for now. Now going into the Project ENB.221. I'm going to go for the fantasy preset. The realistic preset is perfectly nice as well. It's just the fantasy preset has much more saturated colors, which is what I like. Opening up that folder, I'm going to go into the main files and I'm going to grab everything here. Drag and drop into my Skyrim folder. I'm going to go back up one level. I'm going to go into the performance options. It is currently in full graphics mode, so this is going to have a massive impact on your performance. If you find that the frame rate hit is too much, try option A, B, C, D, and then E in that order. That will progressively increase the performance of your system. I'm going to go to option D. I'm going to drag that file and drop. Okay, we now need to configure our ENB and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into the ENB local.ini file. I'm using Notepad++, but regular old Notepad will be just fine. And the main setting that we want to alter is video memory size. It's set to 1024 by default, but that's incorrect for pretty much everyone because you may notice the comment here says it should be the size of our VRAM plus our regular RAM minus 2048. This is in megabytes. And the way we find how much VRAM and RAM we have is by first right clicking the desktop, hit screen resolution, click advanced settings. And here we can see I have 3072 megabytes of dedicated video memory. It is very likely that your number will be different. 
to find out how much physical memory we have, I'm going to right click the task bar and hit start task manager. In the performance tab, we can see that underneath physical memory, I have a total of 32,708 megabytes of physical memory. So I'm going to open up my trusty calculator and I'm going to go 3072 plus 32708 minus 2048 and that is 33732 your number will almost certainly be different but that's how you figure it out vram plus ram minus 2048 so 33732 and that's just fine for now i'm going to reopen model organizer and there's just a couple of other things we need to change. If we open up the project ENB page again, we can see that in the installation section, there are some settings that we need to alter. First up is B float point render target. And that's telling us that the Skyrim prefs INI is located in my documents. Wrong. It's located in mod organizer. And if we go to mod organizer, we click the little puzzle up here. We go to INI editor and we click skyprefs.ini, we can alter the values here. And we need to change B float point render target to equal zero. And the way I'm gonna change these settings is I'm first going to select everything here, copy and find. There we are. Change the value to one. Next up, B draw land shadows, control copy find it's already selected B trees receive shadows the last two things we need to change are I multi sample and I max anisotropy change both of these values they are located just under the I size width and eye size height settings in the Skyprefs INI. Save this and our ENB configuration is done. Start Skyrim like you normally would. When you first load up Skyrim now, you should be able to see this message in the top left hand corner. If you do, then everything's okay and we can load our game. And we're back in Skyrim and everything looks much better. I brought up the FPS in the top left hand corner to just show you that I've taken a quite substantial performance hit and I imagine you have too. Even taking the second most performance friendly option, I still lost almost 20 FPS or one Xbox One in layman terms. The way we configure the ENB is if we hit shift and enter at the same time, we can open up this nifty little console. And we'll have our own special mouse to use it. If I turn some of the color effects off, that's the vanilla colors, global colors with the ENB. If I use original post processing, again, turn off bloom, the world looks substantially less vivid and I can turn on depth of field if you don't want to be focusing on things in the distance I hope you've enjoyed this guide I enjoyed making them they took a lot of effort but I hope now that there's a few more people out there with an ultra modded Skyrim and I hope that you share this knowledge with others and most importantly I hope that you have fun have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.